I've always loved to do a variety of things and activity, and as a family we do that too. Skiing, kayaking, hiking, you know, fishing, boating, you name it, anything outside. And never gave a second thought of what I wanted to do, and then all of a sudden I started to get pain. At first I thought it was because something I did, but then it just, I could tell it wasn't, it wasn't a muscle strain, you know, it was a different type of pain. So as long as I was standing, I was okay, or if I wanted to relax, I couldn't sit in a recliner when it, I'd have to lay on the floor. And it was just a dark time, debilitating. <laughs> Trying to find relief, whatever it was, laying on the floor thinking, oh my God, is this going to be my life like this? No one can fix this. This, this is just awful. Spine surgery provides such a unique opportunity to really make a difference in the quality of life of a lot of these patients. One of the blessings that I've had is I've been trained by some of the best people in the world for doing some of these complex, minimally invasive uh, techniques. I train at the Mass General in Boston and it's a very traditional place where you learn, you know, spine from the bottom up. and. As a result, you did very complicated operations open and you saw the complete anatomy. At the end of training, it was very clear that minimally invasive spine uh, was what patients were demanding and that's where a lot of the innovation was happening. And so I decided to go train in Phoenix at the Barrow Neurological Institute. Seeing patients recover so rapidly and without having to destroy a lot of their tissues to accomplish what you're trying to do really was inspiring for me and it, it really caused me to want to really learn and master all the techniques uh, for performing minimally invasive spine surgery. It's very common to hear surgeons saying that the learning curve for minimally invasive spine surgery is very steep and it's not worth the time and effort to try to adopt these new techniques. And when you think about the outcomes that you're going to deliver for your patients and the resilience that you have, as a neurosurgeon or an orthopedic spine surgeon, uh, the learning curve is nothing. You can very easily overcome that and uh, really deliver excellent outcomes for patients. When I went into that appointment to Dr. Kofi, I had no conception what my life was going to be like after the surgery. I just, my number one was to get some pain relief and then I'll figure out if I can do the activities I want to do. So, Mary, she had really profound and debilitating uh, low back pain and leg pain. Three levels were completely degenerated and she had multiple levels that had spondylolisthesis, which is one spine level sliding on top of the other. And I think in the traditional way, in a case like this, she would have to have a very big incision, probably have a lot of tissue destroyed in the process of trying to, you know, get the solution she desires. We did a two-level A-lift from the front. Um, she was in supine position and we were able to put in a modulus in her body and we were able to then put her prone and do an X-lift and then at the same time do percutaneous screws. It was amazing. I mean, I was in the hospital two nights, but they had me up and walking right away. And I remember asking Dr. Kofi, I said, well, when I get home, what do I do? Do I just lay in bed? And he said, gosh, no, we want you to get up and do what you can. I was just like, really? But that's, that's the healing process is walking. To hear a patient, you know, express an appreciation, especially if you take them from a point where they had very little to live for and dreading every day, in activities as simple as walking to a point where they're excited to do things again. It's like giving them their life back. When I first started getting back to activity, of course it was a little apprehensive at first. First time we went biking, we got on there and I'm like, this is okay, I can do this. That was such a confidence builder because I didn't have to worry about it or think about it or I have a bad back or this. It's like, no, I don't have a bad back. It, it feels great. Now. I can pretty much do anything I want and I don't even give it a second thought. With the doctor-patient relationship, they become like a family member to you. So that's what it's all about, having a lot of family members that are very happy. Our hope is that they just 
just go back to living their normal lives. They came in, it's fixed, they move on. And maybe they can send me a text message every now and then. It exceeded my expectations that, wow, I'm back to where I was before. I can do the things I want to do with my, my family. I can go biking, walking, hiking, get in and out of the boat, kayak. The sky's the limit. We need to keep innovating. I think we are just now scratching the surface. I think spine surgery will be so much better than it is today because they're going to be better technology, better implants, better devices to really take care of these patients. And I'm so excited that you know we can be part of bringing all of this to reality.